never stops. And neither does its need for fuel and electricity. The problem? They pollute the planet we live on. But a new era is here. One of cleaner, greener energy. Join us as we step inside the world of renewable power. Because the time to plug into the new grid is now. Hi, I'm Leslie Nagy. Welcome to Your Green Life. Energy, we may not think about it, but surrounds us every day. From getting across town to getting across the street, energy makes our lives go round. But it's leaving a dirty footprint that could stop the world in its tracks. That is, unless we turn to cleaner, greener energy. Everything we do that requires energy, whether it's things that, driving and running our homes, to simply manufacturing things, or uh, pretty much everything involves energy. And, and most of the energy we use creates uh, pollutants that, that contribute to global warming. Energy. It keeps the Earth spinning on its axis, and it keeps us moving too. But there's a problem. Only 2% today of our current electricity use nationwide comes from renewable energy sources. If you include hydro, maybe it's 7 or 8%. And we can do much better than that. And we need to do much better than that. The rest of the energy we're using, it's dirty. Fossil fuels like coal, natural gas, and oil emit carbon monoxide into the air. We are anticipating that CO2 will at least double, if not triple, by the end of the century. We have, you know, energy coming in from the sun, and it basically gets trapped within this blanket of atmosphere around the Earth. The more emissions that we put into the atmosphere, or the greater the concentration of what we call greenhouse gases or global warming, the thicker that blanket becomes. It becomes uh, easier to trap those emissions closer to the Earth, so you kind of heat it up like an oven. The result? The Earth is literally cooking with us on it, and it's changing the climate. It just keeps getting warmer, and so that's having, that's having an impact across the map. What that means? Rising sea levels, disappearing mountain snow, and weather extremes. A lot of the, the scientific community uh, you know, is saying that the changes are accelerating. They're happening ra more rapid than we had imagined that they would in the past. It kind of begs the question of... of uh, what do we do, what you know what do we do now the answer is clean things up go green with renewable energy that doesn't pollute the time to really be doing that is yesterday um, but you know we have a lot of these technologies available today that we just we need to be using them especially when it comes to producing power and hitting the road those two together are are really the greatest contributors to our greenhouse gas emissions uh, in the United States. Emissions that can be reduced as we look towards a greener future. And the best place to start that greener future that we're talking about is right here on the open road. Most of us are contributing to pollution every time we get behind the wheel. But one day soon, that could all change. Americans love their cars. Cars are like moving billboards of who we are. They're a reflection of our values. And what are the majority of us driving? Pollution emitting gas guzzlers. Transportation represents a substantial fraction of our, of our total energy use. And so there's a real imperative for us to work on alternative fuel solutions to uh, gasoline and, and conventional petroleum use. So what's a nation addicted to driving to do? Get behind the wheel of something cleaner and greener. Why are we still in you know, the era of you know, leisure suits and A-tracks in terms of cars? The old-fashioned gasoline engine is going to get kicked to the curb the same way that horses did. We're going to be running on more on, a, on electricity and alternative fuels and grown fuels. We're talking cars fueled by natural gas. Through your natural gas line in your garage, and then you just come over plug it in, leave it overnight, it takes about eight hours to, to fill an empty tank. Buses running on biodiesel and even corn-based ethanol. Then there's the hybrid. Hybrid is a great advance over a regular car. It's a, a f more efficient gasoline engine car and you about double your mileage. Brad Berman and Felix Kramer love hybrids and make it their business to know the industry. In the last year or two, people have become aware of what's possible. Standard hybrids, which run on gas in a rechargeable battery, are already on the market, and car makers are starting to catch on. It's the first 
alternative vehicle that has broken anywhere near the mainstream. And it's, it's broken a 100-year reign of the gasoline internal combustion engine. Kramer founded the California Cars Initiative. His goal is to get plug-in hybrids, like his converted Prius, on the road too. In my everyday driving, I can drive around on highways, local driving, uh, and average over 100 miles a gallon of gasoline, plus about a penny a mile of electricity. This is really the key, uh, the key ingredient here. Uh, this goes in the back of the car, and this goes to a regular 120 watt, 120 volt outlet. It just goes right in here. It adds a second power source. So basically, what you've got is, uh, it's as if you add a second fuel tank to your car. His plug-in gets 60 miles on one overnight charge before kicking over to the gas engine. Inside the red box are a lot of lithium-ion batteries and uh, that is what makes the difference, about 30 times more energy in those batteries. Now that's some battery power. This is probably the most exciting time for cars since the birth of the automobile. Now let's meet a man who lives and breathes hybrids. He's right behind this door. Let's go in and see what he's working on. My passion has always been to build a cool car. <laughs> so the objective is to build a cool car that doesn't use gasoline. Dr. Andy Frank is widely regarded as the, the father of the plug-in hybrid. He's been busy there in, in, uh, at UC Davis for many years building plug-in hybrids when everyone else said uh, that it's a pipe dream. Dr. Andy Frank heads up Team Faith, a group of engineering students at the University of California, Davis. This is the only, only one of this kind of car in the world today. Frank and his crew are currently competing for the Challenge X Prize. The goal, to build the greenest and cleanest car there is. This is tri-fuel. This is gasoline, ethanol, and solar. To be able to mix and match and combine these different technologies and fuel sources opens up a whole new era for, for cars. This is Toyota Prius engine. Off to the side is a 100 horsepower electric motor. Frank's team is re-engineering this SUV to give it larger batteries and electric motors to cut energy consumption and emissions. As a bonus, it adds biofuels and fuel cell technology into the mix. When we're all done, this car will weigh the same as the original car and will operate actually better because this car will accelerate much, much faster and it'll be like a 300 horsepower car. An overnight charge gets you 60 gas-free miles. And you can imagine what that would do to the emissions problems of our cities will become cleaner. Sounds pretty good, right? So why can't you buy one of these babies yet? One of the biggest challenges is to have reliable batteries. But we feel that we've got solutions for that already. Andy has built uh, half a dozen cars or more uh, with all different kinds of batteries, proving that we can do it. The auto industry and and anyone who cares about the, the uh, impact of our driving owes Andy Frank a debt of gratitude that, that he was out there paving the way. He's a visionary. Speaking of visionaries, I'm back here. still ahead, meet a chef who's got a green mission of his own. And it starts in his kitchen. Plus, you could call it bottling the power of the sun. One of the nation's largest wineries shows us how it's done. And bye-bye windmill. Hello, wind machine. Who knew what was old could be new again? You're watching Your Green Life.